up until this point, we've been doing hypothesis tests on the mean. So what we've done is perform a hypothesis test on the mean to see if it's equal to some value. But now what we're going to do is we're going to perform hypothesis tests related to comparison of means. So this means two different populations. We've got cases when variance is known and when variance is unknown. So here we're going to talk about comparison of means when the variance is known. For example, the breaking strength of hockey stick shafts made of two different graphite Kevlar composites yield the following results in Newtons. We've got composite A and composite B. We collect two samples so we can compute statistics. Now, in this case, we're going to assume that sigma is known. We know it to be 15, and so I've got that down here. I'm not calculating the sample standard deviation because we know what the population standard deviation is. What we want to know is, is there a significant difference in the mean breaking strength of these two composite materials? A difference in means, we can set up a hypothesis. Our null hypothesis is the mean of A minus the mean of B is equal to some delta. Most of the time, this delta naught is simply zero. Other times, you want to perform a hypothesis test on the difference. You know, the difference might be two, or the difference might be 10, and so on. In this case, since we're getting our average of composite A to be greater than the average of composite B, we would perform an upper tailed test. There's no reason to perform a lower tailed test here because your sample points to the fact that composite A might be stronger than composite B. If delta naught is equal to zero, which again happens 99% of the time, then we can simply set up the following hypothesis. We're trying to show that the mean of A is greater than the mean of B. So for comparing two populations, we have population parameters, capital N1, mu1, and sigma1 squared. We have population two with population parameters, capital N2, mu2, and sigma2 squared. And we take two samples. We're taking this green sample and this red sample. They may or may not have different sizes. They may or may not have similar variances. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to determine, are these means the same? Does mu1 equal mu2? It turns out that this is quite a complex problem, especially when the population variances of these two populations are different. And so in this screencast and the next, I'm going to explain how we can perform these hypothesis tests on comparison of means. So for comparing means, we have three possible hypothesis tests. The first is a two-tailed test. The second is an upper-tailed test. And the third is a lower tailed test. In this screencast, we're going to be assuming that the variance is known. And I'll talk about the variance unknown case in the next screencast. We take two samples, two random samples from two different populations. We assume that both are independent and normal. Or if they're not normally distributed variables, we assume that we have large enough samples such that the central limit theorem applies. The point estimator for the difference in the two means is simply the difference between the two averages. That's our best estimate for the difference between two means. And so this points us to using our sample statistics. The variance of the two is equal to sigma 1 squared over n1 plus sigma 2 squared over n2. So it's somewhat a weighted average uh, depending upon the number, the size of those two samples. If we transform this to the z scale, what we can end up with is that the difference in means follows the normal distribution and the z value you can compute is as follows. We take our difference in averages, subtract our difference in means, our hypothesized difference in means. A lot of times this is equal to zero. And then we divide by the square root of the variance. I just want to note that this denominator in some of the forms you see later in this screencast is going to be a little bit different because we can simplify it depending upon if the variances are equal or if the sample sizes are equal. So let's take a look at how we might implement this test. Here we have a simple upper tailed test. The test statistic again is calculated as follows. We reject the null hypothesis if our test statistic Z0 is greater than Z alpha for an upper tailed test. And again, commonly the difference is zero and we're just trying to tell if the means are significantly different from one another. We can also have a lower tailed test. In this case, the criterion upon which we reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternate is that our test statistic is less than negative Z alpha. So we're looking at a lower tailed test. 
It turns out that for the variance known case, there's actually four different options. We can have variances equal, and if variances are equal, then the sample sizes can be equal or unequal. When the variances are unequal, we can also have sample sizes equal and unequal. And just by the way, I'm sure some of you are wondering, well, how do we know if the variances are equal or unequal? Well, you're going to learn in a subsequent screencast how to determine if the variances are equal or unequal. It turns out we use uh, something known as the F distribution. So let's just kind of summarize what we've talked about so far. We can compute the sample statistics for two different data sets. If we know the variance, now this is the underlying population variances of the two populations, sigma 1 squared and sigma 2 squared. Then we have to ask ourselves, are they equal? If the variances are equal, then we have to ask ourselves, are the sample sizes equal? If the sample sizes are not equal, then we're going to do something different. So let's go back to the left side. If the sample sizes are equal, then our test statistic is just the difference in sample averages divided by sigma times the square root of 2 over n. If the sample sizes are not equal, then we end up with the following test statistic. If the variances are not equal, but the sample sizes are equal, then we get this test statistic. And then finally, if the sample sizes are not equal and variance is not equal, then our test statistic is this one, which is the most complicated. You notice here that really all we need is this final one that I showed, this test statistic down here, because all of the other three can be derived from this one. So again, we can have three different hypothesis tests. We have a two-tailed. In that case, our rejection criteria and our criterion for accepting the alternate hypothesis would be that our test statistic is either greater than Z alpha over 2 or less than negative Z alpha over 2. And just a note, we can always compute negative Z alpha over 2. That's the same thing as Z of 1 minus alpha over 2. So what we're doing here is we're, for a two-tailed test, we're trying to see if our test statistic, our test statistic again is Z naught, if we're getting a test statistic, for example, way up here in the tail, then that means we can accept our alternate hypothesis and we can assume that the two means are unequal. Or if we're getting a test statistic way down here and that's going to have a negative value, if that's less than negative Z alpha over 2, then we're also going to accept the alternate hypothesis. For an upper tail test, our test statistic, in order for us to accept the alternate hypothesis, our test statistic must be greater than Z alpha. And graphically, if we put alpha into the upper tail, we have a critical Z value, Z alpha, above which would be rare. And if we're getting a Z alpha way up here in the upper tail, then we would accept the alternate and reject the null. And similarly, for a lower tailed test, if our test statistic is less than negative Z alpha, then we would accept the alternate and reject the null. And graphically, if we're getting a test statistic down here that's rare, we would accept the alternate and claim that the mean of 1 is not the mean of 2. If we would have gotten a test statistic here, then that is not rare, and we would have rejected the alternate hypothesis. Note that for all these cases, we can compute p-values. The p-value for the example I just showed would simply be the area to the left for a lower tail test of our test statistic.